have to apologize. I didn't have time to put together slides, um, but to be honest, there are so many sets of introductory slide things out there. You're not going to have any trouble if you need to look any of this up. Um, I'm going to go with uh, this is you know very basic. What is Arduino? What can you do with it? How do you do it? Um, start with this that Stephanie very graciously lent us for this demonstration. Um, this is from is this Maker Shed stuff? Uh, Radio Shack. Radio Shack. Shack. Yep. In so in local Radio Shacks carry this stuff. I think the prices are pretty much the same as you get online, and there's no shipping, so it's a good place to pick it up if you want to get your actual Arduino. Uh, stuff as opposed to a clone. There are a lot of clones of Arduino stuff out there. Be careful. If you're not absolutely sure what you're doing, get Arduino. Um, there are a lot of variations on the stuff because it is open source and anybody can do it. Um, so this one is uh, an Arduino Uno. There's basically two parts that you need. Standard USB cable. Find them anywhere. And then there is the Arduino itself. This is an UNO. Um, there are several variations. Uh, most of them work pretty much the same. Um, again, if you're not really sure what you're doing, do your homework. Uh, read about um, what the differences are. Um, UNO is very safe. You generally won't have any problems. Um, the thing that you probably will run into is that when you first connect it to your computer, uh, it's not going to recognize it, uh, depending on what operating system you're running. Um, and you may need to install a driver. Uh, the driver does come with the Arduino software that you will download from the website. Um, all you got to do is uh, run through and point windows at it and it'll find it and install it, no problem. Um, so at its core, Arduino is just a microcontroller. This is an AVR type microcontroller from Atmel. Um, the, there are uh, millions upon millions of these out there doing various things in the world. Um, but they tend to be very difficult to use uh, if you don't have a lot of the support hardware. Uh, you save a lot of money by doing that, so for pro professionals, uh, it's a good thing. Uh, they also, the software that they use uh, for writing uh, the applications that run on here, the little programs, uh, tends to be, uh, while it's very efficient and fast, it's not really aimed at the beginner. It's got a lot of register names and uh, little shortcuts and things that make sense for professionals, not so good for hobbyists. So what the Arduino uh, does is it takes away a lot of that complexity, uh, wraps it up in something that's a lot easier to understand and a lot easier to work with. You lose a little bit of power, uh, but you don't need all of it anyway, so you can get a lot more done um, in a much easier to understand package. Uh, a lot of what you can do uh, is uh, published in a number of books like this one. This one is Getting Started with Arduino. Um, Massimo, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Bonsai. Bonsai. Um, he is one of the co-founders, designed and board and got it out there. Um, he has a lot of interesting things to say about, not just about how to use it, but about why you might want to and the types of people who use it, some of the philosophy behind what is Arduino and why open source is interesting um, and very powerful. Uh, there are a number of other um, books and uh, websites. Uh, the Arduino CC website is a good place to start. Obviously, they've got links out to everything, documentation about uh, all of the software before you download the IDE for it. Um, so, I'm going to not spend a lot of time telling you why you should use it and show you a little bit more about how you use it. Um, I also brought along uh, some of the things that you may want to have at a minimum. Digital multimeter, measuring voltages. Uh, if you want to know if something's on or what it's doing, you can get them for as little as $5 and up. Uh, a little fancier, oscilloscope. This one's about $100. Uh, single channel, 20 megahertz. Uh, it'll give you where the, where the multimeter will tell you what a voltage is at any instant. Um, if you have a changing voltage, the multimeter will show you the trace. Or, sorry, the oscilloscope will show you over time a line of what that voltage is doing. Uh, we have big old oscilloscopes over here that you can use for free if you're down here. 
Um, there are some other tools that you'll want, most likely. Breadboards. Um, you can mount, you can set your, uh, your board beside it. These headers, you can connect with uh, some jumper wires, which I also have here. Um, you'll also, that's the other thing you'll probably want to get when you buy, the, buy an Arduino, is get a set of jumper wires. Um, it'll save you a lot of time. You don't want to be making those. Uh, so you can also get um, your, uh, per, your breadboard, perf board in uh, these various sizes. These are very convenient for much smaller projects. Um, you're probably going to be hooking up uh, various sensors and control devices like servos. Um, it's handy to have somewhere to connect all that kind of stuff other than just directly to the header pins uh, for prototyping. Uh, when you have got things done, you'll uh, generally do something with uh, solderable perf board so it all stays put. Otherwise, you'll have wires pulling out all over. Um, if you advance on to, um, to beyond the Arduino, what you're going to run into is that uh, the large Arduino board is, is uh, while it's very convenient, um, it's a little expensive for deploying as a product. Um, you may want to go to a smaller board, which saves a little bit of money. These are also handy because they have pins on the back and they'll install directly into your breadboard uh, so you don't have to have a jumper wires running over there. Um, and then uh, beyond that you can actually remove this chip from the board and install it into your product. Uh, so when you get started you're going to go to the, the Arduino CC website and you're going to download the uh, they call it Arduino. It's the IDE, Integrated Development Environment. It's the thing you write the code in that you're going to run on the chip. Uh, current version is 101. Uh, it will notify you when there's new updates. You just pull them down and install them. Uh, when you first connect the device, if it comes up and it does not recognize it, there's a, there's a driver's directory under your Arduino directory. That's where you're going to find the uh, the driver for that board. Okay, so uh, it's programmed in. See? That, that's the message you might get if it didn't work. that everything works is there's a link example. Uh, there are, the uh, IDE comes with a number of uh, samples. So you just go to examples, go to basics, and there's a link here. Open that up. Uh, you want to make sure that your board is set to whatever board you happen to have. Um, if that's wrong, sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. Um, so be sure you check it. Uh, when you connect the um, device, which I have not done yet, USB cable, can't do it wrong. Although, when you plug it into different um, USB ports on your machine, sometimes it will change what serial port it's on, so watch out for that. Okay, so now it shows up. And it recognizes it, so it's already got it selected for me. Uh, now all I have to do is hit the upload button. It's going to compile it for me. It goes through and changes all the, uh, the C source code into a binary. Uploads it. And now the little blinking light here shows you that everything is working. Uh, so that's the most one of the very most basic things you can do with it. Uh, if you don't already know C, uh, there are, it's one of the most common languages. Uh, you'll be able to find a lot of references on the internet. Um, one of the best, and um, if you like books, one of the best ways to get into it is to get uh, the book by Kerning and Ritchie, uh, The C Language. Uh, it's very old, it's about this big. It's got everything you would need to know as far as language syntax, what all the little symbols mean and where you can put what. 
It won't tell you anything about Arduino. It won't tell you anything about um, keywords and things that are uh, that you need to uh, write programs for Arduino. It'll tell you uh, things like, uh, for instance, we have here the void loop, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. It'll tell you what all that does. Um, I guess I'll run over this real quick. Your uh, your program is called a sketch. Um, it you can have comments. Uh, a lot of people don't put in a lot of comments. Uh, I recommend it. I comment the heck out of everything because in six months when I come back, I've forgotten what I was doing. Who wrote this crap? Yeah. Oh wait, I did. Mean, <laughs> that was me. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, several styles of comments. You've got the these uh, multi-line and then there's single line. Doesn't matter. Um, you can declare uh, variables. So every variable has a type. I don't want to get too much into a programming lesson here, but um, as you're manipulating values in your program, you need a place to put it. Uh, so you have a named variable, and you can assign a value. And then you can use those within your uh, within your code. All the code will be in um, a, uh, a procedure of some sort. Or, uh, so your sketch will come with two. You'll have a setup and a loop. The setup will run once when the uh, device powers up. Um, so anything you need to do, like setting up a serial port for doing output, uh, configuring devices, anything like that, you're going to do in there. Um, you have uh, about a 13 or four, 13 to 20, depending on how you count, um, inputs and outputs. Um, in the setup is generally where you would configure whether they're going to be an input or an output. They can be one or the other, and you can switch them during runtime. Uh, but you got to pick. Uh, and then it has some analog um, inputs and a couple of analog outputs. Analog inputs and outputs are different things. Don't let the fact that they're called analog confuse you. Uh, what? It's a random experiment. Okay. Uh, experiment feedback? Or? Hopefully, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the digital, uh, the, the device is digital by its nature. An output can be on zero, uh, five volts or off zero volts. Um, you can have any of those uh, device, any of those ports, uh, including the analog ports. What's on the on the device? You'll have labeled. Um, see, it's one through thirteen for for your digital I/O, and then over here you've got some analog pins, A0 through 5. The analog pins will work as digital pins if you configure them that way. Uh, but they also will allow you to read analog voltages between 0 and 5 volts. Over, over. Okay, sorry. Holler if you can't hear me. Um, so you have... Yeah. In addition to the analog inputs, you also have a couple of analog outputs. They're not actually analog. What they do is they turn it on and off really fast. Um, with some filtering, then you can average that on and off and get a value between 0 and 5. Uh, where was I? Okay, so in your setup, um, you'll uh, they'll be configured by default as outputs, I believe. Uh, so if you want to read anything, you'll need to, in your setup, configure at least one pin as a digital, as a digital input. After the setup is run, uh, it's going to come in and it's going to run the loop, and it will continue to run the loop. Every time your loop exits, it'll come back and run it again. Uh, and that's all it does. So within this particular loop, what it's doing is it's doing a digital write. Uh, that's one of the Arduino functions that's provided by the, uh, by the uh, API that comes with Arduino. And this stuff, is what makes Arduino much easier to use than the uh, AVR uh, without the uh, without the Arduino support. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're giving the digital write. We got to tell it what port and what to make it. Um, so here we have we're telling it the LED port. And that's this variable that was declared up here. 
It's just telling it to use port 13. Um, port 13 on a, most Arduinos will have an LED on it built in so that you can have a easy indicator. Uh, and then we're going to tell it that we want it to be high or on 5 volts. Uh, and then it has a delay function that's in milliseconds. Uh, so 1,000 milliseconds for one second delay. And then it does, just switches it off, waits, and then the whole thing repeats. That's your loop. Um, I don't have an analog uh, demonstration set up, unfortunately. Um, one of the simplest ways to play with it is to get, this is from Radio Shack, this is a uh, potentiometer. It has three connections. Uh, you connect one to your voltage, one to your ground, one in the middle. It varies when you turn it off. So it's great for uh, if you need to do user input or anything like that. One of the examples that comes with uh, Arduino is a, I believe it's called Servo Sweep. Connect one of these, um, power ground, and then the middle one will go to one of your analog pins and will read the value that's on there and it will connect to uh, a servo, very much like what's running the little camera up there. Uh, and when you turn <coughs> potentiometer knob, it will read that value and then map that to the uh, to the analog uh, well, to the servo output, uh, which is another library, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Uh, and so as you turn this, the servo will track what you're doing. That's a, a fun demonstration. Uh, let's see. Ah, libraries. That's where I go. Uh, so while you can write, uh, what, what are the powers of Arduino? Uh, as an open source project is that anybody can contribute. Uh, if they have an interesting piece of hardware, uh, they can write a piece of code uh, and package it up as a library and put it out for other people to use. Uh, the Arduino software comes with a few of these. Um, let me see. I've got it installed. Uh, I just fresh installed this so I don't have any handy, but uh, there's uh, like the servo library, there's libraries for running LCDs, um, simple things like running buttons. <coughs> buttons sounds like it would be an easy thing to handle. As it turns out, you can get a lot of complexity if you have more than a few buttons. Um, so a button library is handy if you don't want to deal with that. Uh, there are libraries for doing things like X10, um, controlling um, lights and, and uh, appliances, things like that. Uh, there is a area on the Arduino website called the Playground where you can find a lot of uh, different uh, libraries that people put out. Um, they're very easy to install. You just download the zip file, drop it into the Arduino directory in the right location. They'll all tell you where. Um, and it shows up in IDE. Um, let's see. I think that covers most of it um, aside from actually getting into doing programming. Uh, does anybody have questions at this point? Okay. The, uh, the Arduino itself, uh, they, they actually surface, uh, so the question is uh, how many outputs can you get? Uh, they, they give you 13 digital. Uh, one of them is uh, weakened a little bit by the fact that it has the LED on it. Generally it's not a problem, but it limits you to what you can do with it. Uh, then you have the uh, five, six more with the analog pins, most of which will act just like digital outputs. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. They brought out pretty much everything that they could. Uh, some of the pins are dedicated to doing uh, serial I.O. Uh, so you're going to lose two pins uh, because they're connected to the serial port on this. If, you are, if, you're, if you've got an application that does not need serial, um, you can disconnect those. Um, generally, if you're getting into that, though, it's best to just get the chip and install it. Um, these chips will run um, without any of the supporting hardware. Um, they have an internal oscillator. Um, you can pull the chip off there, put it on a breadboard after you've programmed it, and it'll do its thing. All you got to do is flank out.
right. Uh, so the the AVR chip that's on this particular one, I think, is a Mega 3328. Uh, it has uh, a fixed amount of memory and it runs at 20 megahertz. Uh, not very fast, not a lot of storage, not a lot of RAM. Um, but for most kind of controlled things, uh, you're going to not need a lot. Um, so as you're programming, it's important to keep in mind that you do not have a lot of storage space. Um, and that as you load it up doing tasks, you need to try and be efficient at them. Don't, don't try to over-optimize things. Wait until things are a problem. Be aware of where things might be a problem and come back and fix them when they do become a problem. Um, but uh, for tasks like um, the quadcopters, uh, I believe a lot of the quadcopter control boards are actually uh, AVR microcontrollers. Um, yep. Which, well, it's out. So that's a 168, uh, which is about half the, half the size of this one um, in terms of storage. Uh, same speed, though. Um, so you can do, if you're careful, you can do a lot with it. Um, if you're not careful, you'll start running into a lot of issues. Um, when you're, uh, I, a note about uh, driving outputs. You have to be careful with the outputs on the uh, pins. They're good for zero to five volts. Um, if you go over six is the absolute maximum, you don't want to go there. If you go over that, um, it's not unusual to blow an output. It'll stop working. Um, sometimes you can kill the old chip. So you need to be very careful about that. If you're going to be driving higher voltage loads, you need to look into um, using some kind of a MOSFET switch, a uh, solid state switch, relay, something like that. Um, probably. Uh, MOSFETs are about the easiest way to go. Uh, relays work pretty well, but a lot of times the relay, um, they've been popular in the past, but um, they require a lot of current, um, and the output pins on these can only supply, is it 30? Uh, I think they'll sink or source about 30 milliamps. I know they'll do 20, I don't remember. You can check the data sheet. Um, it's very important to have around. Um, and that's not enough to drive most relays. There are some very small micro relays that it'll run. Um, generally you're going to want to put a switch on it to run something like that though. Other questions? Anything in particular you want to see? What are some other cool applications that you're having? Uh, well I've got one that, uh, so we have these, uh, these power meters um, like for your house um, that is made by iTron. And uh, one of the interesting things that uh, OPPD did recently was uh, they went around and they replaced most of those um, with a more modern variant that broadcasts its usage data. Uh, and uh, it's, I think it's on uh, 820 megahertz, thereabout, it jumps around. Uh, and so if you have a radio receiver, uh, you can connect it to a microcontroller like this and receive those broadcasts, decode them on the chip, and then uh, track your power usage. Example. That's one one thing. Uh, we have people that are uh, doing things with uh, sump pump monitoring, um, any kind of uh, you know uh, power monitoring task. You know what's happening. Um, the the makery monitoring micro there hanging on the wall. We got the camera up top. Just down below that is a um, is an Arduino variant called a board Arduino. Uh, it is basically the same thing, but it's in a smaller package with pins. Uh, very much like this one that sit on a breadboard. Um, what it's doing is monitoring the lights in here. If you go to the website, um, you will see in the right-hand corner there's a box that says the lights are on or the lights are off. That's where that comes from. It's monitoring a little, um, I think it's, a, uh, anyway, a little light sensor on there. And uh, it talks to the headless laptop right there, uh, which gets that information out to the internet for us. Um, it also has a relay on that board uh, that you can control from the internet. It's not currently hooked up to anything. Um, what else we got on there? There's a temperature sensor, so we can check the temperature in here. Uh, right now it says it's hot. Um, and what about the sun that sends off the, the Star Trek sound? Yes. Sound that, that little sound that I made just now uh, is, so I've got two servos on there that run up to the camera. Um, I'm using the basic servo library that comes with Arduino. Um, all you got to do is tell it you know, where you want the servo to point, and it points in there for you. Very easy to use, a lot of fun. 
I recommend, if you're going to play with them, I recommend getting servos. Yeah. Uh, that's, it's very easy to make stuff that's, that's a lot of fun. Uh, so the, uh, there's a web service running on the laptop that's connected out the internet. And uh, when you go to our web page, um, you can click a button to say, look at the presenter position or look at the fridge or whatever. Uh, and that web service um, has been configured with what servo values that is in the room, and it'll point those over there. So that's an example of a, of a kind of an intermediate uh, Arduino app. Uh, it's fairly straightforward, but it's a rather large sketch. Uh, what? Oh yeah, the, uh, a lot of uh, RepRap printers are actually um, running on, uh, not necessarily Arduinos, but, uh, they're usually a lot bigger with more output, but it is an AVR chip, um, and in some cases, uh, the software is compiled in Arduino. Um, so that's another another example. In some cases they have um, SD cards uh, right on the board uh, so that you can put your, uh, you can walk up and put your uh, printer file in there. And then there's libraries to read SD cards um, so you can get data input that way. Um, where the chip has only a few K of storage, flash storage, you can of course put many, many gigabytes of uh, storage um, on an SD card so that you have access to that. Of course, you can always write back to an SD card, so if you're doing um, like a battery-powered um, data logger somewhere out in the field, um, you can have a lot of uh, room to store information. Mm -hmm. So the Arduino board is more, more there to uh, help program the ARG? Uh, yeah, the, 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 the... Yeah, all of the um, Arduino stuff is aimed basically of making AVRs easy to use. Um, if you don't have um, Arduino, um, there's a lot of um, very low level C programming that you have to do. Um, and getting the, uh, there's, a, there's a piece of software that runs on the chip. When you first power up the chip, the first thing that runs is called the bootloader. And what that does is it, um, it waits uh, and listens to the, to the serial port to see if you want to program the chip. Um, and if you, uh, over the serial port. Uh, using the USB connector. Um, and then if nothing happens, it goes ahead and actually runs the application that you have loaded on there. Um, without that, uh, you have to use a, another kind of chip, like this one, um, which actually is, no, that's a PIC, not an AVR. But, um, so this one happens to be USB connected, but it's got this uh, ISP header, which is another way that you can program an Arduino. There's an ISP header right here. Um, it lets you do some more things uh, that you can't do with the serial programming, but the serial programming makes it very, very easy and uh, takes away a lot of the complexity involved in actually programming the chip. It also makes it very difficult to screw up. Yes. Uh, with the ISP programming, it is possible to get the chip into a state where, it's, um, where it can't be read. Uh, and won't do anything. If you know what you're doing, you can usually bring it back, but you have to have the right hardware. Um, Arduino takes away a lot of the, um, uh, the stuff like that, where you have to have special hardware to resurrect and chip or whatever. Anybody else? Feel free to come up and look at the stuff. We're doing kind of a double header tonight. Um, Cheyenne is going to talk briefly.